A long, long time ago, in a network far away, we used to use NetBIOS, like long, long time ago. So there's NetBIOS name servers and Win servers, and we could resolve things with a simple name without any domains or anything else. Well, we've come a long way since then, but we still may have some need for simple, single-label name resolution such as resolving the server, server1, without a domain. Now behind the scenes, there's a whole bunch going on, including a client that might tack on their own domain to a DNS request in the attempt to resolve a name to an IP address. But besides what the client may do or not do, as far as appending a domain on, we can create a special global name zone on our DNS server, enable the feature, and then put alias records in that global name zone, a single name, that our clients, if they're using that DNS server, will then be able to resolve with that single name. In this nugget, I'd like to walk you through setting it up and verifying that it works in DNS. So to support the single label DNS feature, we're gonna do three basic things. Number one, we're gonna go ahead and enable the feature in DNS. Secondly, we're gonna create the zone called global names. And then third, we're gonna put at least one CNAME record in that zone and as we know, a C name is an alias, which points to some other record, like an A record. And then we can test it based on a ping to the name to verify whether or not the DNS can resolve that for us. So we're here on our Windows 10 client machine. And let's bring up the PowerShell scripting environment by clicking on the shortcut here in the taskbar for it. To save us a little bit of time, I have the basic commands set up for us. So these two commands right here effectively enable the feature of using a global name zone and also instructs the DNS server to query that global name zone before giving up on a resolution. So that's rows one and two. Row four is creating a DNS forward lookup zone called global names. And we could do this here in PowerShell or we could go to DNS manager, right click and create a new zone. It, either way would work. The key is we're gonna name it global names like this. And then we're gonna put at least one C name record inside of that zone. Again, we could do that from the GUI by right clicking and then simply adding a C name record and filling in the blanks or we could use PowerShell as shown here on row five. So in our example, let's go ahead and add an alias for dc-nug.nuggetlab.com and the alias name we'll give it is test host. And we'll put that in the zone called global names. Also, just for fun, before we do this and test it, let's verify that it doesn't work to begin with and then we'll test after to see the difference. So these four commands we're gonna issue on the DNS server and that's at dc-nug. That's the server we're gonna issue those to. And from a client perspective, if we go over to the tab for the client. I'm gonna highlight row number one to clear the local DNS cache on this client and press F8. We'll highlight row two, we'll do a get DNS client cache to verify it's empty. And then three, we'll go ahead and ping a name called test host, which is gonna fail because there's no records in the global name zone or anywhere else for test host. So super, let's go back to our server, dcnug, and let's go ahead and enter these four commands. So we'll highlight row number one and press F8 to execute that telling it to do the query to the global name zone. Highlight row number two, we'll enable the feature. And we'd want to enable this feature on every DNS server that had a copy of that zone as well. And then row number four, we'll go ahead and create a forward lookup zone called global names. And we'll replicate that to any other domain controllers in our domain. At the moment, we're the only one. So with that highlighted, I'll press F8. And then let's add a C name record by highlighting row number five and pressing F8, which creates a C name called test host, and it puts that C name record in the global name zone. Now we can verify that by going to DNS manager. So you can open up DNS manager and simply go to dc-nug. If you already had DNS manager opened up, you'd wanna click on the refresh icon or right click on it and specify that you wanna do a refresh. And then if we double click on forward lookup zones, there we have global names right there. So if we highlight global names, we have our alias, called test host that refers to dc-nug.nuggetlab.com. And inside the nuggetlab.com zone, we do have an A record for DC nug that points to .100. So with that in place, let's go ahead and bring back our PowerShell scripting environment and go over to the client tab. So on the client, I'm gonna go ahead and use the squeegee to clear off the output. We'll highlight row number one. I just wanna clear the cache to make sure we have a nice fair test. And with row number one highlighted, we'll press F8 to execute that. Then we'll highlight row number two and press F8 to execute that just to verify it's clean. Also, I realized that as you and I are going through this together, as you practice in the hands-on lab at a later point, you may or may not have additional things cached either on the server or locally on the client. And that's why I'm throwing in an occasional extra clear command just so we can have more similar results. We can focus on the activity that we're generating and the resolutions that we're generating. So with that cache cleared, we'll highlight row number three and press F8. And we can see that it does resolve 
to the 192.168.1.100 address of dc-nug, and that's because of the test host CNAME record in our zone called Global Names. And now, my friend, it is your time to practice. I'd encourage you to launch this lab, go through the exact same steps we did here together to verify the creation and functionality of a global name zone in DNS. And I'll see you, my friend, in the very next nugget. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.